Hi, my name is Robert Hunting. This is one of several in a series aimed at explaining how young children learn mathematics. To introduce the topic of decomposing numbers, let us consider the currently recommended algorithm for doing subtraction. Take the example of subtracting 27 from 42. This computation involves knowing that you can think of 42 not as four tens and two ones, but rather as three tens and twelve ones. In other words, 42 is split into three tens and twelve ones so that seven can be subtracted from twelve. Children can learn to perform this computation mechanically, but understanding how this method of subtraction works conceptually rests on knowing that numbers can be separated into various parts, decomposed if you will. So in this example, 42, the whole, is conveniently decomposed into parts consisting of three tens and twelve ones. That way, seven can be subtracted easily. Hence a name for this subtraction algorithm is the decomposition algorithm or method. Part whole knowledge involves an ability to shift one's focus of attention from the part as a unit to the whole as a unit and vice versa. That is, a capacity to disembed the part from the whole, while at the same time having an awareness of the whole in relation to its parts. Part-whole reasoning with numbers starts to develop before children commence school. For much of the 20th century, it was assumed that young children, upon entering the first grade, had to be taught mathematics from scratch, as if their minds were blank slates. Yet. Young children's potential for mathematical thinking prior to formal education was reflected in the practices of pioneers of early childhood education such as Froebel and Montessori. In this video we will discuss part-whole reasoning in the context of children's early numerical thinking as we observe a four-year-old engage in a numerical story situation called Bugs in the Rain. We know that children younger than five years are able to deal with problem situations involving small sets of numbers. They can determine the number of items up to five without needing to count, a process known as supertizing. Preschool children also have ideas about its addition and subtraction. <coughs> Here we see Luca, aged four years and two months, responding to a story task about what Luca chose to call crabs, who don't like getting wet when it rains. This example shows how part-whole understandings of the first five numbers is closely connected with the beginnings of addition and subtraction, and a deepening understanding of numbers as abstract mathematical objects. So one day there were some little crabs playing at the beach. Right. And there they are. Can you put them in a line? And tell me how many there is there are together. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Five. Good. Well, these little crabs were playing at the beach. And do you know, guess what happened? Yeah. It started to rain. So they said, we don't want to get wet. We're going to run on and hide underneath this rock. So the first little crab, he went, run, 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 run. And he's hiding under there. Okay. Now, how many little crabs can you see? How many little crabs? Are there on the beach? One, two, three, four. And how many little crabs are hiding under the rock? One. Okay. As the set of five crabs is divided into two co varying subsets, one visible, the other hidden, Luca was able to keep track of the crabs that were placed under the cup all the way to five. When all five crabs were out of view, 
Lucas said there were lots hiding, and after being given a quick peek, remarked that the crabs were all in a ball, so he couldn't say how many were hiding, unless he counted them. The next little crab says, I am going to go under the rock too, with the other ones. There he goes, and he hides under there. How many little crabs are out on the beach now? One. Mm. And how many little crabs are hiding under this rock? One, two, three, four. Okay, finally the last little crab says, I want to go under the rock too. Now, are there any little crabs out on the beach? No, no, no. And how many little crabs are hiding under this rock? Lots. Lots? Do you know how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, <laughs> eight, nine. Okay. Do you want a quick peek? There they are. How many is that? I said no. Huh? No one. Do you know? They're all in the ball. Do you think do you think you can count them? Yeah, you can count them. How many were they in the room? Do you know how many is there now? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Five, okay. Let's put them back under the rock. Luca was able to deal with the numerical partitions of the set of five crabs when each subset was hidden from view, up to five. But when the crabs decided to leave the rock and go to Mama's house, and each subset was hidden from view, he had more difficulty. He had to see the remaining crabs after the first crab went to Mama's house, likewise after the second crab went to Mama's. Another little crab wants to go home to Mama. Can you take another little crab home to Mama? Ah, yes. Now, how many little crabs are left under the rock? Do you have count them? Do you need a quick peek? I just count them. Okay. Three. Okay. And how many little crabs are under here? At One, Mama's house. Two, yeah. three. Have a quick peek? How many did you see? Three. Okay. Six months later, Luca is presented with the bug's task again. Well, guess what happens? It stops raining. And this is Mama's house, remember? And one little crab pokes his little head out and he says, Can you grab a little crab from out of there? He says, Oh, it's stopped raining. I'm going to scamper back to Mama's house. So away he goes and he goes into Mama's house. Now, how many crabs are hiding under the rock? Four. And how many crabs are at Mama's house? One. Ah. And then, guess what happens? Two more little crabs decide they're, whoop, they're going to go back to Mama's house to stop raining. And it's time for their supper, and they scoot under there, right? Yes. And how many little crabs are now hiding under the red rock? One. Okay. And how many little crabs are at Mama's house? Three. Okay. You want to check? Quick peek. Two. Ah. You want to check? I didn't see. You didn't see? Three. Right. Okay. What happens next? Do, do, do all the rest of the little crabs come sneaking out? Yeah, yeah they do. And they go back to Mama's house. Under they go. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. Now, how many little crabs are hiding under this red rock? No, no. Ah, are you sure about that? You want to have a quick peek? <laughs> and how many little crabs are under here? Five. Are you sure about that? Yeah. See how he is much more confident and less dependent on perceptually accessible material. How does a person develop an ability to think about numbers in flexible ways when attempting to solve problems? Such a general ability is called number sense and is highly valued by mathematics educators. We have seen how one critical aspect of number sense 
is the capacity to mentally decompose and compose numbers into parts or combine parts into greater wholes. Teachers will be aware that young children are figuring out the structure of numbers, including their component parts, and will provide further experiences and conduct discussions in their classroom to further extend this knowledge as children's familiarity with numbers develops to include tens, hundreds, fractions, decimals and beyond. You can learn more about how children learn mathematics by obtaining my books What Children Can Teach Adults About Mathematics and The How and Why of Teaching Elementary Mathematics available through the iTunes Store, Amazon or Google Books. Visit my website at www.palm-ed.com or my Facebook page at www.facebook.com forward slash hello palm. Mm -hmm.